This is episode 58 of Standing Out. Standing Out is a remarkable interview style podcast with the intention to highlight women and men making outstanding contributions in their field. This podcast is generously sponsored by Think Global. Think Global is a business advisory firm working with women entrepreneurs around the globe to scale their businesses to the next level. Today, I'd like to welcome Jessica Ashley. Jessica is a content strategist, content creator, and coach. She's the founder and voice of Single Mom Nation and its sister podcast. Single Mom Nation Radio, an award-winning blogger with more than 40 million page views and 40,000 comments. Jessica now also helps single moms thrive through through transition as a creative divorce coach. Jessica wears inappropriately high heels to the playground and is a mom to a Taekwondo doing awkward breakdancing stand-up comic, 12-year-old son, and a feisty, delicious cheek toddler known online as Boss Lady. She lives with her kids and her chef's boyfriend in Chicago. Jessica, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm you're, so happy to be here. Oh, you're welcome. I love the ridiculously high heels to the playground. Yeah. <laughs> it happens every it, day. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> tell, tell the audience a little bit about how you get, got started in sort of like just the online world in general. I thought you were going to say, how did you get started with the ridiculously high high heels? That was like when I was a toddler, but um, hey, I I have a little girl and it starts soon. She's like, mom, why can't I wear high heels? I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) But anyway, (laughs) go ahead. Well, you know, it was kind of, it was, it was just a really a fortuitous moment. I had been um, in academia I was in fundraising. I knew when I was in fundraising, that was not the industry for me, but I could excel at it. Sure. And, um, and really all of that came out of being a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> so there was like this really windy path. Yeah. And just when I quit my job as a fundraising consultant, um, because the person I was working for told me she'd hire me if I could promise her I wouldn't get pregnant for two years and I was already pregnant. Uh So not only illegal, uh, like a conundrum, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I quit that job and um, ended up being a a stay at home mom for a year and a half. And Mm -hmm. at about that point, I really felt itchy to write. I had never believed I could write whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Um, And then somebody randomly sent me a job posting for a parent writer. And I applied and I was one of thousands of people who applied. Yeah. And I got the position. It was a blind application. And I, so I was hired to be um, one of the first bloggers for Parents Connect, which was a Nickelodeon website. Oh, and wow. I was yeah. immediately launched into being a professional blogger. And there I met um, a woman named Stefania Pomponi, who had a huge mom blog at the time and told okay. me exactly what I needed to do to start. And I followed her directions and she, she actually hired me in multiple jobs. We've worked together many times. Oh, it really amazing. opened up a whole, a whole new world to me that as soon as I saw it, I was um, amazed, amazed that like, this is, this is where I'm meant to be. So I started off as a mom blogger and a professional blogger at the same time and really um, got hired for kind of crazy reasons. I wrote about a cleanse <laughs> I was on um, mm-hmm. and how horrible it was. Right. And somebody at AOL Health hired me on to write healthy living content. From wow. there, I got hired at uh, Yahoo Shine as an editor, mm-hmm. which really ended up being like a dream job for me for many years. And after that, went out on my own and in, in a time when content strategy and content creation was really getting its own terms and getting sure. you know, legs. And so it really has never been like a clear path. It has been seizing opportunity and then really luck and, and, and and collaborating with people who are also doing the same thing. And so there have been like these great opportunities that have come out of true authentic relationships and respect for each other's talent. Well, the woman you mentioned that gave you some advice as to how to make blogging as a business work. And then you've worked with her many times over the years. I think it goes back to when you build those authentic relationships, 
knowing that you just want to be in the orbit of that person, other mm. opportunities happen and you just yeah. become, you become friends and you're sharing things back and forth. What would you say is the best piece of advice she gave you? Just do it. Get off just, the phone oh. and do it. And here's a <laughs> discount code. <laughs> here's a discount code. Go do it. <laughs> I love it. There was some mothering to that yeah. because she shared what she knew openly. Sure. And, um, and over the years in, in these, I guess it's like more than a decade mm -hmm. since then, she has been really open about sharing with me what has worked and what hasn't. And um, she now with um, several other women have a huge agency, um, the Clever Agency. And so they've been very open with the public about what has worked as women in this industry and what doesn't and just offering mm -hmm. straight up advice. And I would say that was really a model for me as I built more relationships. And I love that, like you saying, being in the yeah. orbit of other people, because it is always my intention to work with super smart women mm -hmm. and to lift each other up by what right. we are doing and to collaborate more than we compete. And with that mindset, I think I have very fortunately been in the orbit of amazing women who are doing amazing work, who are kicking my ass to do <laughs> even better work. It's amazing how women myself. can lift up. It's amazing how women can lift up other women, you know, and push them to do more. And I love that. Just do it. And I like you, I can really understand. And that resonates with me about, wait, this world exists. You know, I was in corporate marketing, um, for six or seven years, you know, every day in and out of a cubicle with a very structured, you know, be there at eight, go home at five, lunch break in the middle sort of thing. Um, and with kids, I found there's this whole other world of having a little bit more flexibility, working remote, um, but still making it work, still working hard and doing mm -hmm. bigger things than you ever dreamed of. It's, it's, it's really opened some doors, I would say. What do you think as far as, like, what are your best kept resources? What are things that you like to um, listen to or read or, you know, where do you go for inspiration? So where do you go for inspiration? Are there blogs that you like to read or books or authors? What do you find? Well, I'm, I'm fortunate, like I said, to know a lot of really talented writers and I'm, I'm really sure to read, um, and follow my friends, um, especially yeah. because we talk about ideas so much. So I love to see how they're transpiring or how they're evolving for that reason. I love the edit your life podcast, um, mm. by my good friends, Asha Jordanfest and Christine Co. They wrote minimalist parenting, oh. um, and the mom hour by my friend, Megan Francis, because a lot of our conversations end up in those podcast conversations. Right. So, oh, that's awesome. I read a lot of, a lot of those people in my network too. Of course, reading blogs is just not the same anymore. Sure. Um, but I, I mean, I guess in terms of inspiration, I would say the things that really like center me and remind me of who I am to move me forward and like, just do it. Cause I'll overthink yeah. something. I will overthink an idea <laughs> for a year, two years. Um, but I love everything by Pema Chodron. Um, mm. when things fall apart and comfortable with uncertainty and especially like little vignettes or anecdotes that I can flip open randomly and find some inspiration right there in the page, no matter what page it is. Right. I, I love Cheryl Strait. Mm -hmm. I love her. And, um, I listened to the Dear Sugar podcast, which I think is phenomenal. And, um, and the Dear Sugar collection of her advice columns is so great. And I'm just going to cuss right here for a minute because there's a Go for chapter it. in there called <laughs> Write Like a Motherfucker. And it is really the best piece of writing on writing I've ever read about how we can think about what we want to be and we can aspire, but we really just have to get in there and, and we have to just write like a motherfucker. Right. And, and when there are times, right, when there are times when I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to say this well enough. I don't know if I can compete. I don't know if I know how to blog again after all of this right. time. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. I really have that in my head. Like that is to me, 
just go at it as hard as you can. And then the good stuff will bubble up. Is I think that is such great insight or inspiration, or wisdom, whatever you want to call it, because I think so many people who have amazing talents or passions sort of minimize it from an ego standpoint. They feel like, am I good enough? Can this really work? And then so many of us who aren't any better than anyone else go out and we do it. And it's like, oh, well, she did it. Maybe now I can too. And I think that is, there's a lot of, um, you know, wisdom in that of just do it and get the ego out of the way and just keep doing it. (laughs) What would you, so tell us. um, It's hard. Listen, people love mediocrity. Right. People love mediocrity. Right. Like it's why there are olive gardens right <laughs> why there are these i mean we talk yeah. all the time, like, why are these crappy restaurants doing so well you know i think that can really apply to every industry and the right. reality is is i don't want to make a lot of money doing something crappy i want to i want to be really successful in my own mind whatever definition that is mm-hmm. doing something great and there is a lot of pressure there and i can stall forever trying to be you know make the, the perfect the enemy of the good i'm not saying everything has to be perfect but i want to do stuff that's good and yeah. so i really want to read stuff and listen to stuff that's good too by good women right right so speaking of good so not only do you have the whole content universe that you do you've also started creatively coaching uh women and single moms through transition through divorce transition so tell us about that how did that get started what do you do i mean this was really like something that I was like, oh, here's an opportunity. Mm-hmm. I was on LinkedIn updating my profile and somebody popped up who was a divorce coach. And I was like, a divorce coach? I've never heard of this before. And I started researching it and I reached out to a training academy to see what the opportunities were. And there was a training starting in, oh, wow. in just a few months. And it just like, it was really compelling to me. I thought at first, this is going to be really helpful because I want to write a book. And I want to have some credibility. Maybe these little letters after my name will offer me this. And immediately Mm. I, when I was there, just like with the blogging, I was like, this is it. This is how I am going to, first of all, connect with my readers in a more personal and transformative way, in an authentic way. I have friends and friends of friends and people who are referred to me and readers reach out to me on Facebook and by text all the time for like right. girlfriend to girlfriend advice about getting divorced. And so I'm constantly texting with those people. And it seemed like the opportunity to really put intellect and a process behind that. Mm-hmm. And having a great girlfriend to help you through those transitions is really important. And this is even more of that, which I'm really excited by and proud of. And it allows me to really spend just this like deeply connecting time with people who I otherwise was writing to and imagining and sure. speaking to and imagining. And um, because the, the single mom audience is really quiet. Sometimes mm-hmm. they have to be because they're considering a divorce or they're considering becoming a parent without another partner. Mm. And so there might not, they might not leave a comment on a blog post. They might not call in for a podcast. So being able to really have some confidential trusted relationships and help see those women through to the next part of their life where they can really thrive and take the stigma out of divorce is only an end um, is really exciting and important to me. That's awesome. So, and, th- and this is yeah. pretty new, right? Like only a few months. It is. Yeah. It's a few months old. I've just wrapped up my pilot program. And, oh. um, and so now I have coaching clients and to really be able to invest myself in this part of my business, which is my website, single mom nation and, and the podcast that goes along with it and expand that is is so thrilling. I've been really good at making other people's dreams come true with my other clients. And now this is my turn to focus more of my time and energy Mm. over on my own side. So that, that part of it for me is a thrill. And, and I, I think just that opportunity to like reach through the screen, um, with other women has been phenomenal and something when you work at home or you work for clients, you don't always get the chance to do. That's awesome. And I think that's inspiring to see that opportunity and, and just you're going for it. And I, 
and you've lived it too. And I think there's some beauty in sharing that story. I love it. And you know yeah. what I mean? Like that's, it's kind of like a really awesome full circle piece to what you're doing. All right. As we wrap up, what would you say is one trend that one thing that's on your radar that you feel like everyone will be talking about in another year or two from now? Well, I always want to believe that the great content will be king and that that should be a trend no matter what. Forever and, and always. And that that <laughs> forever and always to stand out, no matter how many um, viral sites or posts there are that, it, you know, that it's like there's always going to be great, authentic content is always going to matter. And mm. that people are just getting smarter quicker at seeing through whatever is transparent. They just right. are becoming smarter and smarter and uh, our audiences are and we want to be spoken to in a really um in a really genuine manner and we want to be spoken to as we talk so to me that that will continue I mean I think um where I see Facebook headed which is where so people are if you're meeting them is like in those secret groups right I hear more and more people and more and more clients saying they're not reaching the people they want simply by having a professional page or a business page. Mm. I really think it's um, finding creative ways into the secret groups that we are all a part of 10 or 12 already sure. where we're in our community. And of course, you know, I'd really love to see live streaming get better. And I hope that's the direction yes. is going. <laughs> Um, and it's less, you know, 30 minutes of saying hi to your friends, um, and more I know. <laughs> tightened up polished content, um, mm. with that raw edge to it, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think, I think that social media is really just going to get yeah. smarter and yeah. sleeker and, um, and that a lot of other things are, it's like a return to like the basics. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't need 10 platforms, social platforms. We don't need our content to be everywhere. So I think that will just continue. Well, and I think you're on to something. That's not groundbreaking. I'm not releasing a headline. (laughs) No. Hey, but you know what? Just a little bit of, I think video streaming will get better where we're not spending 30 minutes saying hi to your friends. That would be awesome, right? (laughs) Um, and, And the authenticity piece, like that has been the beauty of social media because it's authentic connections with, with users or customers or clients. Um, but I think, I think you're right. One of the challenges has, has been that too many brands skewed too much to old marketing messages put out on social media and forgot that the magic was in the relationship and the authenticity. I, I would love to see that skew back also. <laughs> it seems like there's like, there is this point in the Venn diagram of it all where that's a, that that's the sweet spot right but there's room for all that experience and like the basics of marketing along with the trends it's like and then it's somewhere in the middle like I don't need 10 hashtags sure. I don't need you know that there's that there's that place for that to meet and that is sometimes hard to convince a brand of. yeah and, and I'd like I'd like there to be a quicker education process about that but we're just right, not right Right. I guess what do you that. think are one of the trends? What's, what's your opinion on that? Trend. So what I see is uh, on the social side and the marketing side is most definitely in the big, so in the big data piece, right? So all of these platforms, we as users, when we go on the platform, we agree to terms and conditions that basically say, yes, I want to use Facebook, but Facebook, go ahead and have my data. We as marketers now have that data and have access to it to make sure that the right message is going to the right person. And we can, we can differentiate people based on buying signals. And I feel like marketing is so much is moving in that direction um, because one, it eliminates some waste and noise, which I think we as consumers of this content would love for waste and noise to be eliminated. So, you know, if it's a um, if it's a brand like Procter and Gamble and you're marketing diapers to me, well, my kids are out of diapers. I don't need that message anymore. So let's get very targeted into, okay, well, my kids are in elementary school. What would be appropriate for that type of mom? Mm -hmm. Um, And so we're able to pull this data. And the other thing is with the data, we're able to make budgets go further because we're no longer competing and bidding against all these other brands. So if I have a brand, um, like say I sell, I don't know, stationery, 
and I'm targeting moms of elementary age kids, but yet Procter and Gamble is targeting the same. Procter and Gamble's budget is going to drive up my cost per click as a small business owner. And so with this big data, we're able to sort of bypass that because we're not bidding on the, the same data sets anymore. Mm. Which is super fascinating, fascinating. right? It is. <laughs> it's fascinating. It's fascinating. No, I would, I would say also, um, well, as I mentioned, my, my boyfriend is a chef and he has a wine bar and restaurant yeah. and I love knowing about his industry and the trends in his industry. Mm. It really opens my thinking about my own business sure. and how I can with other people. So I'm really fascinated as people's skill sets and their careers overlap into, you know, from being a chef into an influencer or being, sure. you know, yeah. you know, behind uh, the screen to in front of it, how those industry trends overlap to me is fascinating. Mm. And I, and I think as jobs, as we change jobs a lot and yeah. our expertise expands, there is more room for the trends to widen and for us to learn a lot more. So I'm always interested to see, and, and just a little outside of what I do, what's happening and how is that going to apply to me? Right. Or how is that going to apply to the advice I give my clients? It's and that's a really smart way to approach growing your business or, or marketing in general is to look at other industries. See, see what they're doing. Is there anything to pull from that? Does it work for your industry? You know, it's yeah. not always um, an apples to apples sort of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I really appreciate you being here, Jessica. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.